I was really, really happy with that one. You know, um, I just thought it was a toughness win. Um, you know, the way Stephen F. Austin guards you, they're going to kind of run you out of your stuff. They're not going to let you run your normal offense. You can kind of take most of your playbook and get rid of it for that game. And so you just got to be able to handle pressure and be able to pass and catch the ball. Uh, you've got to be able to handle the physicality of the game. Their team is, uh, we've played them three years in a row, and this is their biggest, deepest, uh, toughest team. And they, that, you know, I'm sure uh, Coach Keller loves his group because that's his better teams, his best teams have kind of looked like that. And uh, they were big and physical, and I thought we stepped up and met that challenge. We talked about uh, winning the rebounding battle and the turnover battle. And because we won both, it gave us a chance to win the game. Coach, what's to say about Justin Porter to be able to step in and run the offense after Cam uh, Weston goes out? That is a great point, Calvin. He, uh, I told the team there were a couple guys that looked like Warriors out there tonight, and he was one of them. Um, played the last 25 minutes of the game. Could have been more than that, but I know he didn't come out in the second half or in overtime uh, and had one turnover. And when you're facing that kind of ball pressure, and there aren't always obvious guys to throw it to because they're overplaying everything. Uh, Elias King played 43 plus minutes, had one turnover, and these two guys were unbelievable uh, the way they were guarding and rebounding the ball. Um, just a lot of good stuff, a lot of good stuff. It seemed like there was a big difference in the execution, especially in the half court offense from the first half to the second half. Did you see any major differences between yeah, the two halves? Yeah, we scrapped some stuff we were doing in the first half. <laughs> we really did. Uh, and just um, kind of saw some of the things that they were doing defensively to run us out of our base offense and uh, had to adjust. You know, we, we, were, uh, we weren't able to, to run that what we normally do. And so that's what I mean. You know, they're, they're not going to let you do that. And – uh, our guys adjusted well, and just you, you got to find a way against them sometimes to, to win ugly. Justin, you, you had to take a seat on the bench in the first half due to some foul trouble, but you came back in the second half and were able to defend with, with only one foul through the second half in overtime. What adjustments did you make to, to continue to be effective on that end without fouling? Uh, first and foremost, I do need to stay out of foul trouble, but at the end of the day, I'm not really worried. I know I can go out there and play hard, possibly. Like I said, I don't need to be in foul trouble, but if I do, I got Jacob Johnson behind me. I got Count Ty Mosley, Ozell Jazz. I got Tory Austin. Like I got countless guys coming off that bench that can do the exact, same exact thing I can do. I'm not, I'm, I wasn't worried at all when I was sitting on the bench. I knew they was going to get the job done just like I would. But uh, the adjustment I made was just, um, just try to show my hands a little more, um, try to play with my chest. The referee was saying I was smacking down, but I just try to uh, use my chest a little more, not my hands, stay out of foul trouble. Nick, it seems like y'all were able to, to clear out an ISO a little more on offense. Well, why, why did you think that was going to be the successful path forward in the second half? I just thought we had, uh, because of their physicality uh, on the defensive end, um, I thought we could generate some fouls. I thought we could get to the basket. Uh, JP wasn't turning it over. Uh, against the pressure, the, the man-on-man -man pressure. Um, and neither were these guys, really. You know, so we just felt like we could you, – you can't just stay around the perimeter the whole night. And so we needed to find ways to generate ways to get the ball to the bucket and get to the free throw line and take advantage of some of their aggression on the defensive end and kind of try to use it against them. Uh, it's easier said than done. Uh, but. I thought we did a pretty good, pretty nice job, you know, kind of the second half in overtime. For for each player, how difficult is it to handle the ball against that defense? Um, it's it's difficult, but we we guard each other that hard every day in practice. So we were battle tested already every day, and I feel like when we calm down and kind of set into the game, we knew what we needed to do. Yeah, basically, really I was just gonna say the same yeah, thing. Really like we, said. I, I guard, I guard JP, just like that every day. Cam, Cam like that every just day. every day, like it's an everyday thing for us. And yeah. uh, it, it was, it wasn't a shock 
most of our turnovers probably with our mistakes. That SFA has like tremendous defense. They are a good defensive team, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, a lot of these turnovers are our fault. We face that pressure every day. That's how we guard each other. Yeah. We knew it wasn't going to be easy either. We knew it wasn't going to be easy. So, Nick, it, it, were the other two games you played against them the last two seasons like this one? Yeah. Uh, the, they're, they're, yes, in a way. They're, they're sloppy if you like to see free-flowing offense and lots of assists and made threes. And if that's the style that appeals to your eye, then, then yes, they're, they're going to be – hectic. There's big runs because uh, there are times where they're going to force two or three turnovers in a row. And they may go on a 6-7-8-0 run, uh, but it, if you can handle it, you may go on a 6-7-8-0 run of your own uh, because of being able to handle the pressure. They've, they've double teamed the ball, you get it out of the double team, and now you've got numbers. And so it is a, a game of kind of short runs due to Sometimes just sloppy ball handling and then clean ball handling. Um, so, have you had a chance to look at the stats closely or pretty any, close? Any, uh, you see anything you like? The the two the two I liked the most was we out rebounded them by ten, mm. and we had three fewer turnovers. You know, anytime you can do those two things, I think you give yourself a chance to win. I just thought we were they they are a physical bunch around the bucket, and uh, I thought we handled their physicality as far as that goes pretty well. And although our turnovers were high, we they're one of the better teams in the country uh, last year at turning teams over, and so so were we. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know those were those were the two big keys that we put on the, our board before we took the floor: win the turnover battle and win the rebounding war. So in the first half, you went nine minutes and ten seconds without a field goal, and we were turning it over. We we started the game. We were up 13 to five. We had five. We had one turnover to their five. For the rest of the half, we had 11 turnovers to their three, and so they beat us 26 to nine the rest of the half. And it's hard to score when you turn it over. And for the final 25 minutes of the game, we turned it over six times, and that's why we came back and won the game. We just we weren't giving them free ones going the other way. How do you think? Have you ever won a game where you've went that long without scoring a field goal? I don't know. I don't know, and it's hard to do that. Mm -hmm. It's hard to do that, and that's why I was so proud of our team. Is there were a couple of times I told them just now in the locker room. There were a couple of times in the game. I think a soft-minded team would have went away and gotten beat, and you've got to find a way to win some of those games. You know, if you want to win your league, you have to win at home. You have to win home games. And, you know, we're fortunate enough to – we're 31-2 and two here in our last 33 games. Uh, these guys want to win here. And uh, that was one that was – that was tough and hard fought. Justin, how did that shot at the end of regulation feel coming out of your hand? <laughs> I thought I made that. I thought I made that. I was ready to run around the building. <laughs> that makes two of us. I thought I made it, and I was about ready to run around the building. Uh, but it, again, that 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 right there can be a somewhat deflating deal. You know, you had the ball, it's tied, and the ball's in your hands to win the game, and you miss it. And there there can be that you know drop your shoulders in a team like that, and they come out uh, to start overtime, and they can beat you five zero, six zero in a hurry. And uh, we just didn't let that happen. Justin, when when Cam went down and you had to to take over basically as the primary point guard. Um, what was going through your mind, you know, in those situations where you're dealing with that heavy pressure and knowing that you were the guy going down the stretch? Nick, in a physical game like this, Jared gave you 31 minutes tonight. What did you see out of Jared? Jared's a big old boy to be that mobile, you know, and he's, he's uh, you know, to end up with nine rebounds, um, that's what we need out of him. He's a big physical presence. Um, you know, he, he enables us to have second chance opportunities at the bucket. He gives us a little bit of rim protection around the bucket. Even when he, you know, you don't block him. When you're having to drive against guys like this, and then all of a sudden a 6'10 guy's coming over, you, you have to earn him. And they made some, they made some tough ones tonight. But, um, you know, he's, that's, I, I, don't think it's a stretch to say it's his career high in minutes played and probably by a pretty good amount 
and uh, that's a that's a physical game for guys like him. And I, I thought he did a nice job. Do you have any updates on Cam Weston yet? Not yet. Uh, Cam will get evaluated a little bit more uh, tomorrow. Uh, we'll see where he's at in uh, the next 24, 48 NBA, hours. Right. Well, you took one of my hands, okay. Um, this is uh, pretty much an overview, but how important is it uh, playing a solid team like this one, like Northern Kentucky, um, so early in the season and getting the rotation that you got out of your bench players plus your starters? Yeah, I think it's just important this time of year just trying to um, see what – you know, the last two games against Northern Kentucky, you got to find a way to, to win against a, a matchup zone. And then a couple of days later, you're playing against a team that overplays. Two very different styles of teams. Uh, on offense, their two best players for Northern Kentucky are two guards that can really shoot it from outside. Tonight, what they want to do is pound it around the basket and play with uh, kind of old school basketball around that block. And if you want to win in tournaments, you've got to beat different kinds, win different kinds of games if you want to advance. They're not going to all be pretty. Uh, it's, you, you're going to face a team one night that zones you up and somebody presses you the next night. Uh, that's what I, I really like about our group is that's that's two very good teams that we've beaten and it's two very different styles of play. Uh, but we got more coming up. You know, Western Carolina will be in here in a couple of days and they're picked to be towards the top in their league with three great guards. Coach, uh, how are you able to like keep the team focused in games where you kind of you take the lead really early and then you kind of give it up and then uh, stay down a majority of the game and then you kind of come back and win? How do you how do you stay focused? Uh, in I games think like it's that? just a testament to the players, you know, just a, an older veteran group. That's why a lot of times it's it's really hard to win uh, when you're really young as a group. You know, you've not been in that situation and uh, you're playing a team full of vets on the other side. That's awfully hard. And, you know, we're fortunate enough, we got some veteran leadership right here that, uh, you know, if you'd have heard some of the things being said in the huddle, you, you would have never thought that we were out of it. Uh, and that's, that's a big time testament to these three right here. Um, well, me, I've been to a few different schools um, and having different experiences at UMKC and LIU have kind of made me understand what it's like to win and feel what it feels like to lose. And so when you're down and having to having these guys around me has been really helpful, honestly. So those other experiences have made it uh, a lot easier to get through stuff and to come through and try and win. Um, I only played at one other place other than like high school, which my high school coach was a great coach, Michael Curry. I, uh, I give a lot of praise to him because uh, he, he like he, he taught me how to like the college life because he was a college coach before, like the waking up early, the staying late. So I got to give a lot of praise to him. And then I played at Shelton State under another great coach, under Je uh, Joe Eatman. And uh, those two coaches, just playing for them, it made it easy playing for uh, Coach McDevitt. Coach McDevitt is also a great coach, so just – the coaching, like the coaching systems I've been in, it's just been great. So uh, playing at those different places, it just showed me like, just be resilient in what you do, no matter what's going on around you. Just don't stop working, let, let the work speak, that's it. So uh, that's what we do, that's why I tell the guys, put your head down and work. You know, the work gonna speak for itself. <clears throat> kind of gonna piggyback off JB, I only played two other places too. Uh, I give praise to my high school coach, Marcus Gabriel, he was a tough coach. He made me mentally tough because he knew how it was going to be at the college level and at the JUCO level. So he prepared me for these type of moments. So I give a lot of praise to him. And then Nick, for you, you know, bringing these guys who have played either at the JUCO level or at another college all in together have all these different experiences. What's it like having that type of experience, even when it's not necessarily experience here at the level? Yes, yeah, it's. it's uh, it's invaluable. You can't put a price tag on it. Um, it's it's huge. And just guys that are hungry to win. And that's what you want. Um, you know, we can figure out different defensive schemes and offensive ways to – you just got to figure it out. You know, winners find a way and losers find a way to make an excuse. 
and these guys are not excuse makers. We're behind, the guys hurt, we're in foul trouble. Well, we can make those excuses and we're going to lose, or you can find a way. And these guys are winners, and that's the biggest reason we recruited them is they're winners. And again, you go. I, I've said it to our team multiple times this year. You know, winners find a way. Losers make excuses. So really quick, um, talking about bringing a winning culture to the program, or to the program. Um, you brought in Reggie. Uh, you brought in Reggie. Upshaw. He's, he's been and done here what these guys want to do. You know, he's been a great player on great teams, and these guys want to be great players on a great team, uh, want to have a chance to play pro ball. Uh, he's done that. You know, he's played with the Clippers and the Bucks in the summer league, uh, with the NBA summer league. He's played overseas. So he's done what these guys want to do, and he did it here. He just didn't do it at school X out in nowhere. You know, he did it right where these guys dress in that same locker room, play on that same floor. And so, you know, having somebody that knows what it takes and knows that it can be done, um, you, you got to want those guys in your program. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you.